In this lesson, we're going to analyze puzzles and games. Three students are playing a game. Two of the students flip a coin, and a third student records their scores. Student one gets a point if the result is two heads. Student two gets a point if the result is two tails. And student three gets a point if the result is a head and a tail. The first student to get 10 points wins. Explain whether you would prefer to be student one, student two, or student three. All right, well, let's take a look, first of all, at all the possible outcomes when you flip two coins. Well, this is coin one, and this is coin two. Well, coin one could be heads, and coin two could be tails, or coin one could be tails, and coin two could be heads. They could both be heads, or they could both be tails. So those are all the possible outcomes. So looking at the points, if you were student one, It says, uh, you get a point if the result is two heads. So there's only one possibility out of the four of getting two heads. For student two, they get a point if the result is two tails. Well, the probability is the same. There's still only one outcome out of a total of four that would be two tails. And then student three gets a point if the result is a head and a tail. The first student to get 10 points wins. Okay, so student three heads and tails. It doesn't specifically say what order, so it could be heads, tails, whoops, or tails, heads. So in that case, there are two possibilities out of four to get the heads-tails combination. So if you were to choose which student you wanted to be, who's going to get to 10 points quicker? Well, student three, because student three has a higher chance of getting that combination than student one or student two. So part of analyzing games and puzzles is sometimes figuring out all the possibilities. And this is one way of doing that. And this is called a sample space when you're, you're writing down all the possible outcomes. All right, let's take a look at another game. We're going to do this investigation in class, but it's a good idea to read through how this leapfrog puzzle works before you come to class. Let's skip over this one and go to the one with the dart game. Here we go. So Frank and Tara are playing darts using the given rules. Their scores are shown in the table below. To win, Frank must reduce his score to exactly zero and have his last counting dart be a double. So what does that mean here? So here are the rules. Each player's score starts at 501. So everyone starts with 501 and your goal is to reduce your score to zero. Players alternate turns. So first it's Frank's turn, then Tara, and so on. Each player throws three darts per turn. Now if you look at the board, it says a dart in this ring scores triple points, and that's right here. So we're looking at this ring all the way around. That's a triple point. And then the, this ring gives you double points. And then if you go, there's a bullseye here, but there's the middle one and the outer one. So the outer black ring gives you 25, and then the middle red part gives you 50 points. Um, so if you look here, total score for turn, 75 points. How did they get that? Well, this is in the 20, but because they scored on the outer ring, they got double points, so that's 40. And then this one is only 20. And then this one here is five, but because it's on the inner ring, it's triple points. So then you get 15. All right, so let's look at what the scores look like so far. Um, here's Frank, started at 501, scored 100, so reduced the score to 401. So that's how that works. Kept going until right now he's sitting at 36. And then Tara again started at the same number, 501 has reduced her score to 100. 
So the question here is, what strategies for plays would give Frank a winning turn? So what does that mean? Well, he's got three throws in his turn at most, right? So how can he get a score of 36? You've got to think of all the different combinations of throws. So if you were Frank, you're strategizing, right? What kinds of throws could I make and what can I actually do? Because throwing a score in the middle, right, um, on the outer ring there is 25, but the chances of you hitting that is pretty low, right? Because that's a very difficult move unless you're really good at playing darts. So start thinking of, I'm going to just hit pause and you hit pause on the video and think of all the different combinations using these rules for Frank to score uh, 36. So the first thing I thought of was, well, here's 18. So if he could score in the double 18 out here, then he'd be done. But what happens if he hits the 18 and not the double 18? Well, if he hits the 18 and not the double 18, what would his second throw have to be? Well, 18 plus 18 is 36. So he would have to get a double 9. Right? He'd have to score it right on the outer edge of the 9. So that would be the other possibility to get 36. Now, if I continue with my frame of thinking, so he missed the double 18, just got 18. What if he misses the double 9 and just gets 9? Well, then he would have to get 9 again, right? He would have to win his turn with a third dart, right? And if he did that, then his last remaining turn would not be a double. And the original question asked, um, to win, Frank must reduce his score to exactly zero and have his last counting dart be a double. So in this case, he could not win with a double. Now, let's see the next page here. It says, describe two other ways that Frank could win the game on his turn. Well, he could get double nine and double nine again. That would give him 36. If there's no stipulations, right, except for the double on the winning turn, he could get 10 first and then double 13. That would be a possibility to give you 36. And another one that I got was, what if his first throw was 20, then his second throw would be a double 8. Can you think of any other ones? Right? So try to think of some other ones. And then B says, if does not win on his turn, describe a strategy that Tara could use to win on her next turn. So thinking that she needs to get a double at the end, and how much does she need if we go back and have a look? She needs 100. So what would be a way to get 100? Well, getting close to 100, there's 20. Where's that? If she gets a triple on the 20, that would give her 60. And then she would have to get a double on a 20 after that. So that's some good dart throwing if she can do that. Can you think of any other ones? So try to think of at least one other one that she could get to get 100. That's the way I was thinking she could get 100. And that's it for this lesson. So we'll try some other ones in class, and we'll also try that leapfrog question in class as well. Thanks for joining me.